Once again, um, always, you know, going back, giving thanks for many of us are going to be familiar with the ecological succession because that's that's one of the things you talk about in in the, in the course. So, and and now you're you're a strong advocate of no-till systems. So, how can you give us some practical ways of of maintaining that fungal bacterial ratio for our desired crop in a no-till system um, so that it's not going to progress to that old growth for, forest, you know? So h- how do we do that? Well, you, you don't have to worry too much because going from grassland to old growth forest is going to take you a couple hundred years. So not something we're typically all that worried about, but, you know, we'd, we do want to make certain that we get the proper biology. And so you're going to be looking through the microscope to see what's in that sample. And then, you know, what's the minimum that um, those organisms should be held at. We want 136 micrograms of bacteria. We want 130 Uh, five micrograms of fungal biomass. We want to see somewhere around 10,000 protozoa per gram of soil. And we want this would be like if you're growing row vegetables or something like that or and anything. This is these numbers are anything. You have to start at these numbers and make them better during the lifetime of that plant because you put them back there at you know uh, 15 parts per million or uh, eight parts per million, you're just not going to get the system working that rapidly when you start from such a low, low place. Mm. So if you if people are, well, I don't want to do anything other than just let it go. Well, then it's going to take you two or three years Mm -hmm. to get to a point where you have at least the right amount of biology in your soil so that you can um, develop um, a really healthy, good soil. So once you've reached above that minimum level, now, and hopefully you've got way more of that, the, those organisms than the minimum. So, okay, so part of your work's already done for you because your microorganisms already, we're getting it together. So now it's gonna be based on what is the plant that you're trying to grow and so really early in succession you have you know disease causing bacteria disease causing fungi not a really good healthy place uh, but you want when you see that that's where you're at and what you're going to try to grow are say tomatoes then you want to start improving that biology in the soil by adding compost properly made compost that's got the right biology in it it's got the nutrients in that organic matter and will uh, get those nutrients out of the the um the that that organic matter and give it to the plant so um when you see that what you want for um tomatoes you want that ratio of fungi to bacteria to be something like 0.75. So you now get that balance, you know, a little bit of bacteria, a little bit higher amount of bacteria, but still a good community of um, fungi in there. Um, And now the, the protozoa and the nematodes chow down on the bacteria and the fungi and everything starts cycling really well. Let's say you wanted to grow um apple orchard of apples well now instead of a fungal to bacterial ratio where the fun where the bacteria are winning we're going to cross that line of one to one ratio and now we are in a system that has um, a reduced amount of bacteria and the fungi are up there at you know 25 percent higher than the bacteria are and you're setting the stage to grow that plant. So it is kind of a two-step process where you want to be aware that as long as you've got good sets of organisms, enough, great. Now you can start making it something that's going to give you outstanding productivity. 